Hi, my name is Travis Miner, and on behalf of Open Door Education, thanks for taking the time to learn a little bit about how ChatGPT may affect the college admissions process. I am here with our wonderful expert instructors from Open Door's Get It Done program, Allison Nowicki and B. Lepret. And Allison and B will be talking with us today about what ChatGPT means for students who are in the process of navigating the college admissions process. Before we dive in, let's make sure we're on the same page with a little bit of background about ChatGPT. ChatGPT has recently been in the news. It had the fastest rate of acquisition of any software release in history. So things are changing pretty quickly and a lot of people are using this tool. It's a chatbot application that actually mimics human conversation and can do a pretty good job of writing sentences and creating text that sound like a human wrote them. As you can imagine, this has a lot of implications when so much of what we ask students to do involves writing. And so we're hoping to unpack a little bit of what ChatGPT can do, what it can't do, and how students might be able to use it as a tool to help them in the process without it getting in the way. Uh, to start with, I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on, in general, how does the availability of this tool change the, the landscape or the process for students who are applying to college? Thanks for asking that. Um, so I think um, the thing that I have noticed the most with using any of these AI systems, and there are a few other ones other than ChatGPT that are sort of coming out or will be coming out soon, is um, it takes out some of the grunt work initially. So um, for example, if a student came to my office, it was our first meeting about, you know, what are your particular interests in terms of colleges? Um, and you put in say, I'm interested in a four year large university um, that offers biomedical engineering, right? It will give you an initial list of schools, but chat gpt itself is actually fairly old information it's it and it actually will say that that this is um what the list that it's generated is old it's like two or three years old based on information from two or three years ago basically um so it's a starting point right it is not the end all be all of every college that might have this program or that you might be interested in but it's a starting point and i think for counselors working with students in this process, it can start the conversation, right? Like you together, you can generate this list of colleges and then together you can say, okay, go, go look at these places and tell me what you think. And then you can continue the conversation later to sort of dive in more to what that student is particularly looking for. Or is there something about one school you didn't like or, or you did like, and that's what you, that's where you sort of want to focus more. Um, in terms of what that means and uh, like for uh, an application, I think it is sort of the next question. What does this mean for, for applications for kids that they're filling out? First of all, the grunt work of the common application is not going away. You can't use chat GPT to answer those questions. Um, so that stuff is still there for them. But in terms of the essay, um, you know, I think, I think Dr. LaPrette's going to get into more about writing and more specificity, but I think what we've seen so far with chat GPT is that it can, again can sort of start the process for you. It can help students to brainstorm. Um, one thing I was thinking earlier was like, if you've started your essay and um, you're sort of stuck with where to go, you can use chat GPT to sort of help you go another direction or sort of push you along. But I think in terms of, you know, I think the biggest question is, can you just use chat GPT for your essay, right? That's sort of where we're at. And um, I've spent a lot of time talking with colleagues who are on the admissions side in colleges and they they do this for a living they read application essays and they know when an application essay has been really tailored that it's like too it's too well done to be from a high school kid you know what i mean like based on other things that they've seen in the application that is too polished and from chat gpt they're going to be able to tell that it's just too generic that it doesn't really get into what we want you to talk about in your college admissions essay it's not going to help you so I, I, I think it might be helpful to turn it to B to give us some more information about the essay itself, and then we can go back into more of the other um, topics, if that makes sense. I thank you for lobbing that ball to me. And I, I think um, Allison really said it all when she said that it can sort of do the 
the grunt work um, chat GBT in terms of anything I think you know just like companies are wrestling with do we use chat GBT for generic emails um, that's also in the world of education if you need something average and generic ChatGBT is the perfect response. Um, we are going to be putting some samples in with this uh, webcast. And what you'll see is that ChatGBT really has nailed writing structure. Um, it's got very strong grammar, understanding of grammar rules and punctuation, syntax. But ChatGBT is not a rewrite program. So it's not like you can put your kind of messy situation in there and it's going to keep your writing voice and suddenly produce this very sophisticated element. Um, colleges are looking for unique voices that jump out to them from the page and a computer can't generate that for you. And it's also very identifiable as Allison said, that it's a generic voice. Um, this is the one area you don't want to be generic. You want to be unique, both in your um, Common App essay and especially in the supplements that you write for colleges. When a college says, why Cornell? And I asked ChatGBT, why Cornell? And you can see ChatGBT produced a really elegant 500 word essay about any prestigious school in the United States. So it's not going to help you in the college process. In a pinch, writing an email to your teacher about your late homework, ChatGBT is your friend. Um, for this situation, for college admissions, when the goal is to stand out as a, as a unique voice, this is not gonna help you. It strikes me that some of the most memorable college essays are those that surprise the reader. And th that doesn't, I mean, given that chat GPT is a predictive chat model where it's sort of determining what is the most likely next sentence or next word in this sentence, that is, it sounds like it's built for the opposite of surprise and intrigue. I also think, and this is an Allison uh, point, especially, that um, so many of the applicants to competitive schools deserve to go to those schools. So in fact, what an admissions officer's kind of sad job is to find a reason not to admit a very strong candidate. Um, and a generically generated essay is going to be, it's going to be the thing that puts them in the other pile. So I, it's not a risk I would ever let my own kids take. I think one of the pieces that I want to just touch on that B talked about was, um, you know, the, much of the application is generic, right? Like list your list your activities. Um, you know, what awards did you win? You know, tell us about your family. Like, where did your parents go to school? Like all those kinds of things. It's very generic. The essay and the supplements are really the applicant's turn to really show who they are, right? To get their personality out on the page. And that will be gone with ChatGPT. I mean, you, I don't think people realize how much, you know, if you really are writing, you have chosen a topic that you really care about, that you're excited to write about, your personality is gonna shine through that essay. And it's just, it's, it will be non-existent otherwise. And again, if, you know, for most of these applicants who are well, well, well qualified to go to any of these schools, um, you're looking for a way to stand out and you're looking for them to see who you really are, right? It's not about grades at that point because you have the grades, you have the test scores potentially, like it's, you have all the activities. So how do you stand out? And that's, that's really where it can happen is in that essay. And if you don't use your own voice and if you don't put the time in to sort of talk about your topic in a way that really makes you shine and you unique, you're not, you're not gonna stand out. And as B said, you're just, it's, you know, you're, you have to remember that application, um, that admissions officers are reading lots of applications every single day um, and admittedly read them very quickly. And if you're not catching their attention very quickly, they're not going to read your essay very much. They might scan it to look for some information that maybe they were, that they, um, that they don't want to miss, but 
they're, they're not going to spend a lot of time on it. It's not going to really wow them, right? So finding a way to stand out is by using your own voice and by choosing topics that are really important to you and individualizing it. What does it mean to you? Why did you choose this topic? How did it impact you? Why are you telling us about it? Um, those will get lost in the shuffle. And I think um, one way to think about it, we often say to the kids, this is your interview opportunity. A lot of big um, schools, big state schools like you know Michigan or Wisconsin don't conduct interviews. They just can't. This is a student's opportunity to be that voice in an interview. You would never send a robot in your place for an interview. And that you know that you really are giving up an a unique opportunity when you do that. So I think um, I don't think it'll take long for kids to realize this. I don't I don't actually think it's once people give it a shot and see what happens that it's it's going to be something you know folks turn to because it doesn't make a lot of sense. And again, I think I think just to go back to where we started, which is it's it's not wrong to sort of use chat GPT as a way to generate ideas, as a way to start, right? Because sometimes the hardest part is starting your essay, right? Like just staring at a blank page can be really intimidating. This is my college essay. I don't really know what I'm writing about. So just as like a place to start, to generate, just to get your brain sort of moving and thinking is totally fine. It's like having a conversation with somebody, right? Like that's no different. So using it as a, as a starting point to get you going is absolutely okay, but you cannot rely on it at the end as like without you know, changing it and moving in the direction that you need it to go to sort of reflect who you are. I mean, hearing a lot of really important points uh, here, including the idea that this is a discerning audience. You are not sending this to somebody who's never read an admissions uh, uh, essay and doesn't know what it should or would sound like if it's authentically written by a student that you're you're not going to trick somebody who's reading tens of thousands of essays by slipping a chat GPT essay past them. Um, and also that why would you have spent three years of your high school life working hard, distinguishing yourself, and then take a shortcut when it's your opportunity to actually share a little bit of yourself with this with the school it's really a, a missed opportunity um something else that uh, I, I wonder if either of you have encountered in actual in-school situations but I've, I've heard about a number of teachers and professors who are running their students essays through uh tools that identify AI generated text and they're certainly not perfect but in many cases uh it's important that students, don't just take a piece of a chat GPT essay and copy and paste it because that would still get flagged that those programs will recognize, yeah, this is AI generated text. Yeah, it is still taking intellectual property. And I think that's really important for students to realize that if you have AI generated text that you are passing off as yours, um, it is seen as you know, a, a moment of academic dishonesty. We did have at the high school that Allison and I teach in, we, we did have instances of that this year where kids, um, teachers do use, and, and as um, robust as AI is becoming, the AI detectors are also catching up. You know, it's a, it's a never ending, there's money to be made, right, <laughs> for, for both sets of programmers. So it, it's just not a risk worth taking, you know, the, especially for kids, as you say, who've worked so hard, who are so thoughtful and intelligent. And, you know, kids get nervous in this college process, um, but that should not um, lead them to making, making a decision that they will, they'll regret. No one is going to, Holy Cross isn't going to turn you in, you know, they're just going to reject you. Yeah. And I also would say, you know, as much as sort of I've been playing with chat GPT just to see what it looks like, like what kind of things does it generate? So are they, you know, they can put easily put in these um, common app essay prompts and see what comes up. And so it's going to be very simple for them. I mean, I will say based on, you know, depending on the school and based on the number of applications they have, they may not have the time to run it through these AI 
things, but there might be someone else in, you know, like somebody else working in the department that could help with that just to say like, Hey, can you double check this later? Right. So I don't think they're going to be doing it with every single essay, but um, I think with time, they're really going to even more time of seeing these, they're going to, they're going to really start to see them right away. Um, you know, the ones that are generated differently than from the person themselves. The funny thing about chat GBT is it's quite highfalutin, right? It, it has a very sort of like high handed tone. And that's actually something that we always tell the kids, you're allowed to sound like a 17 year old when you write. So it is, it's the kind of thing that English teachers um, have very quickly sort of, as Allison said, you don't have to run every essay through a, a, a you know, a chat bot finder. You can sort of see the ones that think like, huh, this sounds, sounds very high, highbrow. And that reveals itself very quickly. I imagine it's easy for, for students to jump to the conclusion that that is, that is a, a good quality in essay. I want this to sound very, very sophisticated, very academic. And really, this is, this is your one opportunity for a college to hear your voice. And um, I, I love to talk with students about what's one thing you would want a college to know about who you are in terms of your values, your character, your priorities that they wouldn't know by looking at your GPA, your extracurriculars, and your test scores. And a, a robot isn't going to write with the passion that you actually have for, for that part of your life. Yeah. Um, Allison, you mentioned something earlier uh, that I think is really interesting about a student expressing their interests and getting back suggestions for colleges to, to look at. I'm, I'm curious to talk a little bit more about how how might students use this tool to get them started, knowing that it won't get them all the way, but what are some of the use cases that, that people might want to explore? Sure. So, um, you know, what first needs to happen is that a student sort of has to have some priorities, right? Like they have to identify, you know, what are, you, you can't just put in, you know, give me a list of colleges because that's not going to give you sort of what you're looking for. So you have to give them some direction. Are you interested in a two-year or a four-year school? You know, uh, location, a lot of students that have like location in mind, like, do you, do you want to go somewhere different? Do you want to stay closer to home? So you could say things like, I want to go to a four-year institution within um, six hours driving time of whatever town you're from. Um, and if you have a particular major in mind, that's helpful. That definitely will narrow it down. If not, that's okay. But you can think about, um, you know, do you want it to have uh, club sports? Do you want it to have um, acapella groups? Like, what are you, you know, like, what are those little things that you are looking for? And again, the list that's generated is not going to be complete. It's just a starting point. And that's oftentimes how I start with students anyway. You know, they'll say to me, here, are, here's what I've started to identify as my interests. And I'll give them a list that's fairly, um, I would say, diverse, uh, you know, unless they really have very, very specific things. But if, you know, if they don't really have preferences on size, then I'm going to give them a wide range of sizes. Um, and then as they start to go, because for me, the, the piece that's really going to help them make the decision about a school is doing the research. And ChatGPT can't do that for you, right? So you need to dig in. You have to go into the website, figure out more about that school, find out what it is, you know, what are the pieces of the school that you are liking? What are, what are you sort of worried about? And then doing a visit right? Because that is really where you're going to start to determine, is this a place where I can see myself? Um, so it sort of starts big. And that's where that grunt work comes in, right? Like it's that sort of general big picture, like what are some of the places I could start to look at? And then, so for a student coming to me saying, let's say I liked uh, colleges one, four, and five on your list, I'd say, okay, so what is it that you liked about them? And then we can start to tailor the list, go back and look and say, okay, what are more schools that are like that one? What are some of the similarities? What are some differences maybe that might be okay for you? Like, what are your must-haves? What are your sort of would like to haves? And what are your um, don't needs, right? That's, an, that's often a, um, an exercise that I'll do with students. Like, what are your must-haves? And what would be your nice-to-haves? Those are two different things. Um, so again, it's starting, starting big picture and sort of then working together to sort of narrow down the list or to make it more specific to the individual. It's sort of like that same that's sort of like the general thing we've been talking about with ChatGPT. It's very generic. 
and again, not entirely uh, uh, complete, I think is the word. That idea of it serving as a jumping off point seems to be a, a consistent theme, whether it's getting started and thinking about college or staring at a blank page. How might I, I start this essay? Um, seems like a, a great way to either get off the launch pad or get yourself unstuck, but recognizing that the human aspect that we bring to it is, um, at least for the time being, something unique and special that we we can't count on an AI chatbot to replicate. Definitely. Are there any other considerations that you feel would be important for students as they think about um, both approaching their college admissions process and whether AI or other tools available to them might be helpful or worth exploring? I, I don't know if this will ultimately be helpful. Um, but one of the things Allison and I were saying is that it's great to think of AI right now the way we think of Wikipedia. It's Wikipedia is a wonderful tool to look up something quickly and get an overview, but you never, we tell students and we all know as adults, never to rely on it, that it, it isn't actually a citable source for rigorous research. It's just a starting point to find out general ideas. Exactly the same with ChatGPT. It's a good starting point. It is not an academic source and it's not a great creative source either. So it's not that this is an exercise in you know condemning um, any kind of AI bot, but it, it is really important to know its worth. It's, it's absolutely true. And um, people can tell when you've just used AI, they can tell when you've just leaned on it. And that's not what a college is looking for when they're asking who's who, who among these applicants is going to be willing and able to put in the work to be successful at this university. Um, I, you know what, Travis, I was also thinking, um, when you get to January 1st, at the end of the college admissions journey, it's usually January 1st for most people, we want kids to feel like they've done their very best and the rest is out of their hands. It's just entirely out of their hands. You can't feel that you've done your very best if you've used ChatGPT. I can guarantee that it's not your very best. So that we don't want our kids to live with any regret because it is such um, it, it's such a lottery, it's such a crapshoot that we want our kids to know from their perspective, they put it all out there and everything is, you know, everything else is out of their hands. Absolutely. For for any students who are embarking on this process and are feeling stuck and maybe chat GPT isn't helping you get unstuck. Um, Allison and B are our wonderful instructors for Open Door Education's Get It Done program, which is a four day program that runs in August that helps students to complete their applications, their essays, their supplements, so that they can send them off to colleges feeling really proud of the work that they've put into it. And I just wanna put an asterisk on this too. Uh, I. I suspect that we might see ChatGPT uh, as a tempting approach for supplements when a student feels buried in 20, 30 supplemental essays that they have to write. And I would just encourage students to not, not fall prey to that temptation. There's a lot of writing that's expected of you, um, but it would be a shame to pour your heart and soul into your admissions essay and then send a supplement that's obviously AI generated and have that be the thing that cost what you what otherwise would have been a wonderful opportunity. So supplements are, they are a drag, but they do deserve just as much time, attention, and care. Yes, maybe more so. So it's, they're really important. Um, and it's worth checking out the supplements that we posted here so that you can see the difference between a computer generated supplement and a kid generated one. It is, it is a stark difference that really puts a point on the importance of the, 
the human role in all of this. If you have additional questions about the college admissions process, testing, or anything related to getting students from and through high school and into college, visit us online at opendoor.education. Thank you so much.